Okay, in the last video we looked at various kinds of z-tests and we said that you should focus on the idea that all these formulas have the same pattern. A z or a t is equal to some difference between two numbers, we'll call it a deviation, divided by some kind of standard error. And all you have to do is figure out the difference between what two numbers is going to be the deviation and divided by how do I calculate the standard error in that case. And we went through these z-tests and now we'll talk about these various t-tests. And again, a t-test is for a case when you don't know the population standard deviation. However, with um, these proportion problems up here, we always use the z because we start off by assuming we know the standard deviation. Because in order to calculate the standard deviation, it's just the square root of p times 1 minus p but we are assuming that we know that from our null hypothesis. So people always use the z for these proportion tests. But we're going to look at uh, some hypothesis tests for means here when we don't know the population standard deviation. So first case, simplest case, we want to collect a sample mean and compare that sample mean to see if we want to reject a null hypothesis about the average being a number, one number. So for example, again, um, my null hypothesis is that the average IQ of people in my neighborhood is equal to 100. So null hypothesis, average IQ of everyone in my neighborhood equals 100. I'm going to take a sample of people from my neighborhood. But in this case, I don't, I, I'm not assuming that I know what the standard deviation of the population of people in my neighborhood's IQs is, and I actually have no idea what that is. So we have to use a sample standard deviation. So how do we analyze that? Well, we calculate a t statistic, and the t distribution was created to take into account the uncertainty about the standard deviation that is calculated from a sample, that that's just an estimate. So we calculate a t statistic, we take the sample mean, the x bar that we calculated, we subtract the mean in our null hypothesis, the 100 that we said, we think the uh, average IQ might be, and we divide that by a standard error. How do we calculate that standard error? Well, it's exactly the same as how we calculated it for um, when we knew the population standard deviation. It's the square root of the variance, divided by the square root of the sample size. In other words, it's the sample standard deviation on the top divided by the square root of the sample size. And with the t distribution, we have something called a degrees of freedom that we have to know. And for this particular case, we have sample size n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Briefly, why n minus 1 degrees of freedom? n minus 1 degrees of freedom because we estimated a sample mean in order to calculate the sample standard deviation. That's where the n minus 1 degrees of freedom comes from. When you calculate the sample standard deviation, you take the sum of each number minus its mean squared divided by n minus 1 to get the sample variance. It's that n minus 1 that we're seeing here for degrees of freedom. What if we had two samples we wanted to compare the averages between to see if they're equal or to see if the difference is 3 or 10 or whatever? Same kind of, of idea. But let's look at the simplest case of having two sets of observations we're comparing first. Let's assume that in the simplest case, we're looking at two sets of observations but the two observations come from the same items. And in this kind of case, we say that the samples are matched or paired. And an example of this would be, we take 10 people, or we take 30 people, and we measure their heart rate. And then 10 minutes later, we measure their heart rate after they run around the room for five minutes. So we take the same people and we make two measurements on them. 
or we take the same cars and we make two sets of measurements on each car. We test the um, miles per gallon of the car running on gasoline and we test the miles per gallon of each the same cars again when they're running on ethanol. This is called a match sample or a paired t-test. How do we treat these pairs of observations? Let's go back to the um, miles per gallon with gas and the miles per gallon of ethanol. Uh, someone who wants us to be green and use ethanol, their null hypothesis could be that the uh, gas mileage you get on gasoline is equal to the gas mileage you get running on ethanol. Now this is actually not true, but this, this person's null hypothesis, we want to test to see if they are equal. We take 25 cars, measure the miles per gallon on gas, 20, the same exact 25 cars, and measure miles per gallon on ethanol. We treat this, these two pairs of observations as if it was actually one sample. What we're studying here really, if you think about it, is one sample of differences between vehicles. Now let me give you, because um, I know this is kind of a complicated idea unless you see it done, let me actually do this for a second. So um, here are gas mileages uh, on gas and here are for the exact same cars on ethanol. So um, let me give you a couple of pairs of observations here. Car number one got um, 30 miles per gallon on gas and 28 on ethanol. Car number two, when it was running gas, it got 25 miles per gallon, and on ethanol, it got 24. And car number three got 41 miles per gallon on gas, and it got 39.6 miles per gallon on ethanol. With a paired t-test, a paired sample, the way to analyze it makes it actually easier. Just calculate the difference between the two and study the differences. So for example, in this case, we might say the difference is 2, 30 minus 28. Here the difference is 1. And here the difference is uh, 1.4. If my null hypothesis is that um, gas mileage for gas equals that of ethanol, then what we're saying is that the differences should be zero. In other words, the average difference equals zero. That's another way of writing your null hypothesis. If they're equal, the difference is equal to zero. All we have to do now is study this column of differences as if that was our data set. So we would have 25 observations of differences. We'd calculate the sample average difference and then the sample average is our x-bar, the mu naught. What does our null, null hypothesis say the difference should be? Zero. And then we divide that by some standard error. How do we calculate that standard error? precisely the same way that we do if we have one sample because in reality we have one sample. One sample of differences. And um, how many degrees of freedom would we have? N minus 1, where N is 25 cars. 25 differences. So we'd have 24 degrees of freedom in this case. So if you see it from, from that viewpoint, it becomes a pretty simple exercise. Now, let's look at a little bit more complicated example. What if instead of having two samples uh, where we're looking at the same thing twice, the same car twice, what if instead we wanted to test the same thing, but instead of having the same 25 cars, instead we looked at 25 cars that were running gas that day, 
and we looked at a different set of different cars, 30 cars, that happened to be running ethanol that day. How could we test the differences between these two? So a random sample of cars that are running gas and a totally different random sample of cars that are running ethanol that day. The T statistic that we calculate is what's the difference between the two sample means and what did the null hypothesis say the difference should be. So let's keep going in the same vein, the same kind of examples we've been talking about. The hypothesized difference, somebody out there thinks that the two fuels should give the same gas mileage. The hypothesized difference, that's just zero, right? So what we do is look at the difference between our two samples. How big is the difference between the sample of the 25 cars running gasoline and the sample of 30 cars running ethanol? We put that sample difference in there. We subtract zero, which you know is actually not changing it at all, right? And then we divide it by a standard error. Now, how do we calculate that standard error? Again, a little bit more complicated to do this. What we're doing in this particular form of this t-test is let's assume that the variance of the two different samples are equal. That the variance of the uh, gas mileage of cars running gas and the variance of cars running ethanol are the same. I do this because it's a lot simpler to do it this way. It's not always right though. How do you calculate the standard error in that case? Well, you um, take S, which is a pooled average standard error of all the data, the gasoline cars and the ethanol cars, and you multiply it by 1 over the square root of uh, N1 plus 1 over the square root of N2. Take that square root and then multiply it times this pooled average standard deviation that you calculate. And how do you calculate that pooled average standard deviation? Let me zoom in on this because there are uh, some very small things that might be hard to see otherwise. Basically what we're doing in this formula is calculating a weighted average um, standard deviation of the two groups. So we take the standard deviation of the first group squared, in other words the sample variance of the first group, and we multiply it uh, times the sample size minus one, which is its degrees of freedom if we only had one sample. Add that to the sample variance of the second sample times its sample size minus one, its degrees of freedom. And then divide the top by N1 plus N2 minus two. Basically the total sample size of all the cars minus two because we're dealing with two sample variances here and each sample variance would have n minus one degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom in this case is going to be equal to n1 plus n2 minus two or the total sample size. In this case we were talking about 25 gas cars, 30 ethanol cars, 55 minus 2 or 53 degrees of freedom when you go to the t-test and look this up. And so this video is uh, has become long enough. I'm going to end here and but I'm going to continue going in the next couple of days and make some videos where we look at another couple of uh, t-tests and other situations to see how they're similar and see how they're different. And then we're going to look at some chi-square tests and some f-tests as well.